Hello, welcome back to the Pro Pilot Playbook Podcast, where we bring you tips, tricks, hacks, and shortcuts to managing your aviation career from start to finish. Uh, my name's Sean Ritchie, and I'm a corporate pilot with 25 years of experience. And I'm Mike Martin. I'm a corporate pilot also with uh, 25 years of experience. And we, uh, we put together this podcast as a uh, kind of an add-along. It goes to a, a program that we started called the ProPilot Playbook. And uh, we figured this podcast was a perfect uh, platform to get out get out some some of the smaller pieces of information or actually we drop a lot of stuff from the course we sell but uh something we've started doing here that's become pretty popular is answering our listeners questions and um this one comes to us we got one today uh, you read, yeah you read the uh the title on the video you clicked on it but uh should i get an atp on my own before I start applying here to airlines or corporate gigs and stuff like that. Um, mm. If you have a question for the podcast, get this out there real quick. You can always send us an email at, uh, prod, at podcast at propilotplaybook.com and we'll answer it on the air like this. You can also, Great. yeah, yeah. And, oh, and I think I mentioned this in the other podcast, but the podcast is now on pretty much every platform that, podcasts are available on whatever you listen to or or you can watch us on youtube also but you could even tell the, uh the alexa devices to uh oh and the one in my office just slid up when i said that but you can even <laughs> you can even tell your echo devices to uh listen to the podcast which i thought was pretty cool my kids love yeah it. <laughs> i'll have to try that yeah so uh the question today is um comes from Andy. Andy's in uh, Tennessee. And uh, he says, I'm going to lean over here so I can read this. But uh, thanks for the podcast number 18, guys. Uh, similar situation for me. See my times below. He said, And uh, Andy has 1635 total time, 143 multi engine time. Okay. And, uh, uh, oh, I didn't see this before. 107 of that is turbine time. Wow. So he's got it, got itself in a jet. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a jet stream, uh, jet stream 31 slash 32 and about 13 hours in a citation. Uh, so he's been doing some right seat work somewhere. Hmm. But, uh, so he says, do you think I should pay for my ATP out of my own pocket? I would at least, it would at least give me an accomplishment during the downturn. And he's talking about the COVID environment we're in right now. Right. Depending on when you're watching this and uh, could make me more marketable, marketable for future opportunities. Or should I wait for a potential employer to pay for it? I noticed I actually meet the sun country requirements, except that I don't have an ATP. I'm 55 and a part-time CFII. So a full-time flying uh, would job would be a retirement job for me. I know I would start at the bottom, but at this point in life, I have to be careful with a large pay cut. Lifestyle wise, I prefer the private business slash corporate jobs over airlines, but wouldn't rule out a good opportunity. Cool. So to, for anybody that's, uh, maybe we should give them a little background on what, what an ATP is, Mike, because there yeah. could be some people out there watching that, uh, have they no know idea. What that means. Yeah, they have no idea right. what we're even talking about here. Yeah, yeah. So ATP stands for Airline Transport Pilot, and it's basically the the last of the uh, aviation ratings that you can receive, uh, other than what's called a type rating, which is an individual rating for each jet. Um, and you know, it's the commercial allows you to fly for money, but the ATP allows you to fly as captain at an airline. And uh, there's a bunch of hour requirements for it and that type of thing. And, uh, you know, a lot of employers want, want you to have that. And all this has to do with weed out things for hiring. You know, when they shuffle through the resumes, uh, who, who's got uh, – who, who, how to differentiate people. Wouldn't you agree, Sean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically, I mean, one of the few things you can do with – there is a certificate – or pilot's license, actually a certificate is what the proper term for it is, or a name of it is for a pilot's license. But there is a commercial certificate 
And uh, that has nothing to do with being an airline pilot. Um, it's the ATP or airline transport pilots certificate. That is the, that's the highest certificate you can get in the pilot world. Yep. Yep. And um, back when you and I went through this, Mike, it was a, a little different, you know, for every pilot's license you get, for every certificate you get, you have to take a written test and a practical test. Practical is in, get in the airplane and fly with an examiner to make sure you can meet all the requirements and do all the things that are, you know, in the recipe to get the, uh, get the certificate. Right. Um, and then the written test is uh, from a bank of questions and you go to a, that's a separate day, separate whole thing you study for. And then you go take this written test on a computer at a testing facility. Back when Mike and I did it, you just went and took that written test you could just go do it. Actually, I don't even think you need yeah. to have a sign off from an instructor. No, and that was typically, you know, what the airlines wanted. Uh, they wanted you to have your show up with your written test done. Um, and uh, so today, though, in order to take that written test, there's there's some extra steps involved, and they call it the ATP CTP or Certified an ATP certified training program this thing involves like 40 hours of classroom work i believe it's 10 hours of uh simulator time in a real simulator like yeah full motion yeah 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 and which uh, means very expensive <laughs> yeah exactly and and it's the classroom stuff doesn't even have anything to do with the test prep it has it's it's kind of crazy it really um, what they make it go it, through. Isn't it just how we're talking about how it used to be and how it is now? I heard that all this was changed as a result of that Colgan air crash. Sure. Is that the, that's what really screwed things up, right? Yep. I think this was, uh, you know, another one of the little things on the list they did after that crash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can kind of can research that crash if you want. It's pretty bad, but it was, uh, it was icing related, right? When it, I, yeah, I, yeah, it was. Yeah. Tailplane icing actually. So. Yeah. And it turned out a lot of them, they didn't know what they're doing. There's a bunch of failed check rides and all that. And the FA dug in and then th the reaction was, okay, let's, let's increase the qualifications here for some of these people. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Which, gotcha. which is well, where the, where the 15, the hard 1500 hour rule came from and some other stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got uh, on with I my first airline. I got on with my first airline. Um, I'm not even sure I had a thousand hours yet. Uh, you know, I got on as an FO flying a Beach 1900. So it's uh, it's changed a lot. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. So I guess the the quick answer we can analyze this further, but the quick answer is you know. <laughs> Uh, anytime you can use an aviation, what we call OPM, you use it, which stands for other people's money, right? Oh yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> so if you, if you have an employer that's willing to, to, to train you or pay for your training, obviously you would do that. I mean, um, so I've got six jet airplane type ratings. Each jet airplane type rating is a two week to two uh, month long course. It's intensive simulated training that costs, I mean, with expenses, some of them can be 40, 50, 60,000, even if you go up to the Gulf Street, it'll be 100,000 for a type rating. Um, I, I haven't paid for any of those. Employers paid for all of them. However, when you're coming up through aviation, especially at the very entry level, like when you're talking about an APP and stuff, um, yeah, there is employers that will pay for that. But can you get those jobs? And when things get a little tight, which, you know, we're in a temporary tightening of the market or softening of the market, so to speak, for pilot hiring, um, then when you have, it's supply and demand, right? So you got this job available. If you got a whole bunch of people trying to get one job, well, they're gonna sort through and the, and the employers look at it on an economic basis too. They say, okay, uh, how many applicants do we have? Uh, should we spend the money on getting these guys ready for their ATP or should we take people and find the right person and then train them? So um, I think, I think it, you know, to answer this guy's question, um, looking at some country's website, and I pulled it up here real quick, they, they yeah. do have an option to, to hire and train you. And it, it looks like his hour requirements, if he's just eligible for an ATP, which it sounds like he is, 
Um, if he can get hired there, they'll pay for a training as long as he has a current written within the last four, at least four months left of expiration. So uh, hopefully, I'm sure, I'm thinking that, that this individual checked that, I think, before he called. So maybe he doesn't quite meet those requirements or uh, what, but, or maybe he thinks he, maybe he's already applied and they haven't called him. If well, that's the case, yeah, go ahead. Just, uh, well, actually, yeah, we were looking at it together before we got on here, but yeah. uh, no, it was the next line. That's if he already had his ATP written done. Um, didn't it say, I believe you read like the next line down for those who have the time requiring the ATP CTP on a, didn't it say something like, case by case basis or that's what I was going to say. So the new thing is now is you show up the, the kids coming out of school that went to an aviation university already have this thing done, but uh, in the non COVID environment, when everybody was hiring, you know, like compass and envoy and go jet and all these companies, if you didn't have, you had your 1500 hours, but you didn't have your ATP written done yet they would pay for it. They sent you to one of like, you know, ATP, which is, and that's confusing, but that's an actual name of a school <laughs> also, but they have a program. Sporty's pilot shop here in Cincinnati has one. It's, it's 4,600 bucks and they use the simulators. I'm a graduate. Yeah. Yeah. They use the simulators up in Wilmington, Ohio. Um, and uh, anyway, that's the ATP CTP I'm talking about. But if you got hired by the, the co one of these companies, they would send you there first before you went to your initial training, uh, which is all of your, you know, the company policy gotcha. and, the, and the simulator. And then once you, then you would take your check ride. You already had your, you show up at training with your written done after they sent you to that course. And then you, uh, at the end of your school, your initial training, you get your ATP in, in your second in command uh, type rating on your certificate. Right. But, uh, I thought that you had read on ATP's stuff there that they will pay for the ATP CTP. Yeah, it says uh, restricted ATP eligible applicants, and it lists the time, which it looks like this guy met. And then one of the requirements is current ATP written with at least four months until expiration. If no ATP written, successful applicants will be given company paid ATP CTP training to complete the written. There you go. So, yeah. Right there. Right yeah. there. So yeah. Andy, Andy, there's the answer to your question. Now, I don't know if you were really seeking out Sun Country because I got a feeling that, uh, you know, well, right now everybody's kind of, it's wishy-washy who's hiring. Um, the freight right. operators, the majors freight operators are hiring FedEx and UPS are both hiring now. Uh, but it's only a matter. Of, and I heard of one regional and I was just talking to Mike before we got on here, who it was. Yeah. I, I'm second guessing who the regional was, but there is one regional carrier that I know of that is hiring actively hiring right now. Um, Lex Jets hiring. I heard. Yeah. Uh, so it, good charters picked up domestic charter. Yeah. So it's, it's starting to come around again. And, uh, like I said, just a podcast or two ago, my prediction was 18 months to two years and we're going to be spun back up full. Now we just had the election and that's miraculously right. there's a vaccine coming out. Yeah. Yeah. There's the vaccine coming out. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be right back in the pilot shortage and everybody's going to be paying for the ATP CTP. But that's yeah. the answer to your question. Do not pay for it on your own. That is uh that's nuts. That's ludicrous. Now, one thing I will say, he's like kind of indicating in the email, he's a little stagnant right now and things are downturned, you know, and that, and if it is something, I, and I, I'm totally guessing I've never met the guy, but you know, it, it, it sounds like a second career guy. Maybe he's got a few dollars. I mean, you, you know, if you could get this done for $4,000 and it gets you back into the uh, learning mode and, and, you know, uh, get, get you in, you're in a little rut right now. You want to do something positive. That's kind of what it sounds like he's saying in the tone of his email. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. If you want to spend the money and you got it, um, it it's, it's going to, if you have an applicant that already has it, you know, they're going to pick that person. Oh, absolutely. Right. Right. I, I would start by applying though without it and see if you get a call. If you don't, you know, maybe you could do that to, to improve it. Uh, right. the, the other thing, the direction of his email, uh, it sounds like he's leaning towards because of his age and, you know, he wants kind of to find a laid back corporate job. It sounds like, um, 
you know, you might want to, you know, go, focus a little more towards that route than, than getting an airline job, you know, if that's what you want to do. Right. You said he's in Tennessee. Where, where is he at? Uh, yeah. Murfreesboro, which is oh, a, yeah. the Nash suburb. Of, yeah. Yeah. Suburb yeah, of Nashville. Yeah. yeah. So there, I mean, uh, there is a ton of private jet operators there at, uh, uh, B and a, and then John Toon. there's a bunch of jets there. A lot of the celebrities have airplanes there. There's a charter yeah. operation there. I can't think of the name of it. That's pretty big, uh, contour Everett or something. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, you know, you, you start nosing around down there and, uh, you know, see if it, he's already got a little bit of jet time. Yeah. Maybe you end up in the right place at the right time because you, you know, to be an FO and a corporate jet, you're not going to need an ATP. And then there you go. Your career's launched, you know? So. Sure. Yeah. You know, there's some other things to look at too, besides sun country. Uh, if that's the kind of route you're looking, you know, you know, I'd check some of these other, uh, you know, the regional, you mentioned something about a pay cut. I'm guessing as a 55 year old guy, you've got, uh, you're an expert in some type of uh, career field and, and moving to flying, it will be a significant pay cut at the beginning. Um, if you're a, if you are a single guy, I would uh, maybe look at, you know, the, um, you know, uh, Southern air or, you know, some of these freight companies here, uh, you got Atlas and Southern air, you could, they'd be happy with your time to uh, get you into the right seat of a 737 or uh, they got some seven sixes. They've got triple sevens and you'd be flying around the world. And I say single guy because it's uh, it's like 12 days on and uh, you're, you're gone a lot, but within, yeah, you, within two Skype years, your wife from Kazakhstan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Within two years, you'd be upgraded and, oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, and you'll be a captain doing that and you'll be making, you know, I, I've, I think it's well over 200 grand easy. Right. Um, so that's, that's a good deal. And he's, even as an FO, you're going to be, you know, pretty close to a hundred or if not over with, you know, all the per diem and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. that's something to look at. Yeah. But yeah, lots of opportunities out there. And I would not, for me personally, uh, I would not, use money out of my own pocket for that. Right. Right. And, you know, I would just, just a little patience here, just a little, you know, I, I don't think it's not, it's not, you, you and I came up when this, it was extremely difficult to get started and this is nowhere near that. I mean, and you know, we've been saying every episode, I know the last one, I don't mean to seem like a broken record, but the pilot shortage is probably going to whipsaw back because they needed all these pilots. They couldn't hire enough. Then COVID hit. And they stopped hiring. Not only did they stop hiring, that they laid off in some cases. Um, and now, all of a sudden, demand's going to come back, and they they haven't compensated for that. So, in this, we but when we did the last episode, there was no vaccine information. Now it's it's pretty much came out that Pfizer has a vaccine. Uh, it's going to be re- started being released in phases in December. Um, and I mean that puts us like summer could be gangbusters with flying because I, I feel like there's so much pent up demand. Everybody was doing their driving vacations last summer. Right. Summer's always when everybody's traveling business travel. People are itching to get out there. What? I mean, it could just explode. And then all of a sudden now we don't have enough pilots and I mean, they'll go from laying off to massive hiring back to laying off. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm with you, Sean. I don't know if I go invest money. Um, if I, if money's tight right now, I don't know that I go invest money in this. You might be more apt to just keep your, uh, keep nosing around for a corporate job in the meantime, and then just wait this out for another few months and things. You may get a call. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Well, I think we, yeah. uh, I think we hit it from all angles here. Uh, Pat or Andy, right. Andy, thank you. Thank you, Andy, for the question. And, yeah. uh, remember if you have a question, you can submit it to us, uh, podcast at propilotplaybook.com. And I don't know. I think that's all I got. Great. What about you? 
What about you, Mike? Yeah, we we'll good? send them in. No, that, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Po- this is a positive uh, episode. Things are starting to turn around, so everybody hang in there and yep. send in your questions. Thanks for watching. Thank you.